Hey, Josh from virtuallysober.com here. In this video, I'm going to take you through an overview of my new recovery plan version 2 script, and I'm going to show you how it works, what you need to get it running, and just how awesome it is. Just a quick few words on my environment. Here you can see I have a production DC1 Zerto virtual manager plugged into a vCenter behind it, and I'm replicating VMs to my second data center where I have another Zerto manager and a vCenter behind it. If I click on the Virtual Protection Group tab, here you can see all the VPGs that I've created in my environment. And one common piece of feedback that we hear from customers is that they say, hey, this is great. I can put all my VMs in a protection group. I can recover the protection groups. But what if I want to recover a whole data center and I want to make sure that I have boot ordering not only within a virtual protection group, but between the virtual protection groups? And in Zerto, if we click live failover, we get all the VPGs. Could I sort these by priority and then execute and recover only the VPGs that I need in different groups? Yes, I could. But it's not that simple. It's not orchestrated. If you want to define an order of recovery of the protection groups, if you want to put in time delays, you want to put in your own custom scripts, you can't do it via this GUI. But the good news is that you can do it using the sample script that you can download from the blog right now. So let's talk about some requirements. First of all, you need Zerto Virtual Manager running on 5.0 update 2 as a minimum. And for a good reason, because in update 2, we finally resolved the capability to enable failback. So yes, you could fail over before with the API, but you couldn't configure the reverse replication and the failback. Now we got that. I'm happy to show this because now I can show a really cool demo. Of course, you need access to the Zerto manager, a username and password that has permission to be able to actually perform a failover test. And we're going to create a CSV to specify all the protection groups that we want to actually fail over in the order that we want to fail over. So all the requirements, the values that you can and can't use are spelled out in the start of the PowerShell script that you see here. But let's actually just show you what I mean by this CSV. So first of all, we're specifying the VPG names in the order that you want to recover them. The action, so you can specify failover or test. Very advisable to start with a test and then move to failover. We've got reverse protection, true or false, commit policy, which could be none, rollback or commit. The commit time, which is the window which you're giving yourself in which to test the recovery before we automatically delete the journal and commit the failover. Best practice here, I recommend 300 seconds plus, so at least five minutes. But for this demo, I'm going to keep it 60 seconds. Shutdown policy is that if you can communicate with production, what are you going to do with the production VMs? I'm going to force shutdown because these are dummy VMs. Do I want to run the scripts if I'm doing a test? No, I don't. And you can specify a pre-failover script, a post-failover script delay, a post-failover script the time which you want to wait, so the number of seconds before you then fail over the next VPG. So you could put your 10 VPGs in here, put a 60 second, two minute, five minute, 10 minute delay, vary it between each of them. And another cool little thing you can do is add in prompts. So maybe you wanna, before they actually allow the user to fail over, we wanna add a prompt, say, are you bloody sure? And you know what? You're doing a production failover of your VMs. I think it's a reasonable question to ask if somebody's going to click failover. And you can also do a post failover user prompt and say, has the VPG come online? So we'll save this CSV. This is now good to go. These are two VPGs that I have configured. I'm not going to do it all. And I recommend when you first run this, create a couple of dummy VMs, dummy VPGs, and give this a whirl and, and see how, exactly how it works. So first things first, let's configure our variables at the top. What CSV am I going to use? This is the directory in which I've just saved that CSV. Where do I want to create my log? So it's going to log all of the actions. Which Zerto server am I going to connect to? This should be the Zerto virtual manager in your DR site and also the port, which is just default. And I'm not going to store the credentials for two reasons. One, a lot of people say it's a security risk keeping your credentials in a script. I agree. But also, if this is a recovery plan, I don't really want any Tom, Dick or Harry being able to double click on this script and all of a sudden everything's failing over. I think it's a nice fail safe to make sure that they know the credentials. So I'm going to pr prompt for these, ask for it, and then use it for the rest of the script. Now, just for your information, there is nothing that you need to edit past line 46 on this script. That's it. But I have added comments throughout so you can see how I'm building this out. 
And I want to talk you through that before you click failover because this is pretty serious. And if you're going to be running this in your environment, I want you to have complete faith in what I've written for you here, that you can run this, you can try it, and then you can put it in production and it's going to give you exactly what you want. So first of all, we start a transaction log. We're capturing any errors. We're making sure that in that transcript, we're logging everything that we've done throughout the whole process. We're going to build our APIs authenticate with the Zerto REST API. You don't have to install any PowerShell commandlets for this. It's just using PowerShell and the REST APIs in the Zerto Manager. We're going to get a list of all the VMs and VPGs within the Zerto Manager. And this is very useful, one, for an easy output, but two, we can also check whether a VPG exists before we try and fail over. So very important that you match the names. And then we're going to start the per VPG recovery operation using a simple for each command. So you can see if I collapse this down, the majority of the script is all per VPG. Within that VPG, we're loading up the CSV, we're setting all of the variables based on what you put in the CSV. We're then going to prompt the user if you specified a pre failover prompt, it's going to come up here. We're going to then select the VPG identifier, get the latest checkpoint, and then depending on whether you've set this as a failover action or a test action, then we have the different workflows here. So if VPG action is test, then we're going to use the REST API to initiate a test failover to an isolated bubble network. However, if the VPG action is failover, then this is serious. We're going to do a full failover. We're going to reverse the protection and we're going to fail over the VMs to the DR site. And if you so configured it, we're going to reverse the protection. And that's exactly what I want to show you now. So let's run this script. It's prompting me for my credentials, checking that I know exactly what I'm doing if I'm about to click failover. And this is just the credentials that I'd use to log into the Zerto manager and access the vCenter. Here you can see it's confirmed all the VPGs that it found in the Zerto manager, the VPGs that it found in the recovery plan, and it's starting the per VPG recovery plan actions. And it says it's starting with demo VPG one. These are the three VMs that it found in there. And I've got my nice little prompt here. Are you bloody sure? Yes, I am. Let's click continue. It's now going to wait the 30 seconds that I specified for the next VPG to fail over. And if I come across here, Lo and behold, what do we have? We can see that it's now starting the failover for my demo VPG one. And if I confirm the settings, what did I set this to? So I said commit time of 60 seconds, commit, and then reverse the protection. So as soon as that has finished the failover, we're going to see it start counting down. You've now got 60 seconds where you can undo this. Or if you leave it, it's going to commit, it's going to delete the journal of change and then automatically start replicating those changes back to the production site. And if we hang on to the script here, what's it saying? Post failover prompt, has the VPG come online? Well, we saw the action took hold, so I'm happy to say continue. And now it's going to start the failover of the next protection group. So what we'll see is now we've got two running tasks. So you can see in that very simple script, 482 lines, the majority of that, or at least half of it is me adding comments so you know exactly what it's doing when, giving you a nice friendly output and giving you a log. So you can see here in the log exactly what is being done at every single step. Very important, who ran it, when they ran it, where did they run it from, all the VPGs, what was actually recovered, all the identifiers. So you can see blow by blow exactly what it did here. Pretty simple. Hope you found this useful. Download the script if you found this very useful in your own environment. Share, like. Thank you for watching the video and I look forward to creating some new scripts for you in the next video post.